Mustafa PT, I'm the fashion designer. I'm Uru Islam, uh, I'm modeling. And what's the name of your company? Gustavo Apiti Couture. What is a couture and what is the alternative to couture? Well, um, uh, couture it's more like, uh, you know, when someone comes to you, you make something like unique piece for the, for the customer. Mm -hmm. You know, where you discuss with your customer about the design, about the details, and you make something unique only for the customer. Mm -hmm. Most of the business now, they're just running ready to wear, mm -hmm. but there's still more customers who want to do couture, you have to have like unique pieces. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they are looking to get like pieces like from the different places, but they cannot find it. So I come up with the concept, uh, the concept of doing couture to make unique pieces for them so mm -hmm. that they can feel happy. So there's a question for both of you. Um, you can, you can start, um, mm -hmm. how did you get started as a model? Um, I started uh, a few years ago and my friends actually was always uh, telling me that I should be I should be a model, I should model. And then one day my friend called me and said, hey, there is a casting, you want to go? And then I went to casting. I was like, uh, no experience. And then I, I selected and then I've done nine fashion show in one week. One week? Yeah. <laughs> it was like <laughs> surprising for me too. So that's how I started and then it gets, you know, grows up. Oh, where were you at the time and what were some of the, uh, the yeah. fashion things you did? Yeah, I was in Istanbul, Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, it was for uh, fashion TV mm -hmm. and then uh, nine different designers for, it was like a special week for uh, um, like fashion festival in Istanbul. Uh, yeah, and then I um, went to Italy and then I came to the United States. So yeah, it's been three years, so that's how I started. What about you, Gustavo? How'd you get started? Well, um, first of all, I'll say like passion for me, it's a passion. Mm -hmm. I've been in the industry for so many years. I started when I was eight years old. Eight years old? Yeah, from my <laughs> family. <laughs> you know, uh, my mom used to sew, mm. my elder sister used to sew. Oh wow. But you know, my mom, she, um, you know, she, after like, you know, a couple of years, she was no longer sewing. Mm -hmm. She went to, you know, for the education, you know, mm -hmm. field. Yeah. But my elder sister, she, you know, she was sewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every time she was sewing, I was sitting there watching her the way she was doing the work. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want to let me sit close to her because, you know, she was, uh, you know, very picky. And to see like this small boy sitting here wasting time instead of uh, playing with a friend. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was, I mean, she was like, you have to go away. Just go play with your friend. <laughs> but you know, I was just sitting, you know, there watching her. And I w what I was doing every time she was cutting, you know, those fabric for the customers' uh, uh, pieces, I was, you know, grabbing those uh, small pieces, mm -hmm. and I would make, you know, the small uh, uh, garments, you know, small clothes for the dolls. Oh wow! wow. And it was looking so real. But my mom, when she saw what I was doing, you know, she was like, "This boy has something." Oh, that's, and that's uh, a good she started right like you know, training me. When oh, my yeah. sister will be away, mm -hmm. my mom will call me. She will make me sit in the machine, mm -hmm. and she will give me, you know, some of the old stuff to sew. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's how I started. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's how I started. But you know, later on, I went to study fashion in school mm -hmm. when I was in Congo, and uh, after that, I flew to South Africa. Mm -hmm. I studied in South Africa, for example, in Johannesburg. And I, I got my bachelor, um, I got my bachelor degree in uh, fashion design. Oh, nice, nice. So I got a chance to work with you know different designers. Mm. So yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is my way. Who were your? Did you, you? Your mom was your mentor. Yes. Did you have any other peers? Yes, I did. I mean, I can say like for um, uh, I've, I had like other peers from you know the place I worked, mm -hmm. especially when I was in South Africa. You know, people who are like around me, for, uh, I can mention like a few names, like someone like J.J. Skumen. Mm -hmm. um, he's someone that who did help me a lot okay. in my career. Yeah. And there is another one called um, Carl Gibson. Mm -hmm. The guy is so creative. Mm -hmm. He did help me a lot. Nice, nice. And uh, here in Seattle, I can say Luli, Luli and Couture. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, she's the one, you know, working close to that woman, I've learned a lot. As far as your career in modeling and designer, what are some of the greatest obstacles that y'all have faced? Like in, in which way? 
You can answer however you want. Oh, right, because the, I mean, the, what I can say that we have like different obstacles mm -hmm. in the career. I can say first, like you know, in the past, in the present, and maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can make it in this way. Yeah. So, um, if I, I mean, let, let me let me speak about the past uh, obstacle I I had. Uh, first of all, it's, you know, like when I was trying to get in the industry, mm -hmm. like personally by myself, because you know, before I was working with my sister. Mm -hmm. But when I was about like, okay, now it's time for me to do, you know, my own thing. Mm -hmm. To start going, you know, on the media, make stuff for people. You know, it was so hard for people to believe in you. Yeah. To believe like who you really are. Yeah. Or what you have. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can go, you can, you know, you can make something, but you know, other people, they're like, mm. And the other obstacle we had, uh, uh, like I personally, like, like, you know, met was, even though people start, like, you know, accepting what you're doing, but the payment yeah. was hard. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want to pay that much because they, they know like, okay, you don't know anything. You know, maybe you're trying to get, you know, your head out, mm -hmm. you know, to make your name, but you don't, they don't try. You, you know, they just try to put you down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. what, what was uh, the main challenge I had in the past. And uh, also for me personally, it was not easy, especially when I was in South Africa. Mm. The big, that one I can say, like, that was the big challenge I had. Yeah. It was to go to school mm -hmm. and to go to work yeah. and run this small business from home. It was so hard and difficult yeah. for me. But I'm a positive guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really determined. I was like, okay, cool. This is what I'm facing, mm -hmm. but I have to make it. Mm -hmm. I have to find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. So I was trying, you know, to cope all those things, to, uh, those three things together. Yeah. Going to school, going to work, mm -hmm. and running my small business from home. Yeah, yeah. Especially my last year, it was so challenging. Mm -hmm. And I do even remember, you know, my boss, uh, you know, when I was about to do my fourth year, you know, he didn't, I mean, he was not really, he didn't accept me to go for it. Yeah. For it, you know, it was like, no, you have to work, blah, blah, because I was like, I was uh, yeah. an assistant manager in, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the store. And, but, you know, I was so determined. I was like, no, I have to go do it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up by leaving the company mm -hmm. because of that. It was, it was so hard for me. And I was kind of like thinking, oh, now, as I leave the company, how am I going to survive? How am I going to pay my rent? But thank God. You know, he did make like a new way for me. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, when I left the company, let's say I stayed home, you know, for two months. And the third month, I got a call from one of my, you know, my customers. She was getting married and she ordered almost like 20 dresses. Wow. For the bridesmaid, yeah. for the mother of the groom. It was such a big order. Yeah. And that order helped me to, sus to sustain myself for more than four or five months. It was really big order. Wow. <laughs> it was, you know, I can see that was God. Yeah, yeah. And I was, before even like, you know, I left the company, I was really like feeling it like, my time is coming to the end, you know, to work for this company. Mm -hmm. Maybe something bigger is coming, you know, mm -hmm. before me. But I didn't know, I couldn't like figure out like what was it. But when the situation happened, I was so flexible to go because mm -hmm. I love the guy. He's, I mean, to me, he's kind of like a, like a like a mentor because he helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier on, I love his sense of uh, creativity. You know, he's yeah. really creative. And but I was like, this is your company. Let not fight. Let me yeah, just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was really like, challenging for me because staying mm -hmm. home, you don't know what you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. But I was ju I was just you know pushing with my small business, and. Uh, after that, you know, I started like running a small business. I was, you know, just trying to push. I was really hustling, like, you know, going, doing this, this by myself. And thank God I had that one lady. She came to help, you know, she came to help me, to assist me. And after, let's say, six or seven months, the business started, like, picking up. And, you know, within, let's say, two years, the business, you know, was really booming. Mm. And that wow. was, you know, the, what I faced, like, in the past. But the current... Um, if I can see the present, you know, uh, 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 challenge, you know, we have right now is like now, as you can tell, now in in America, and you know, Seattle is not really like a fashion city, you know, it's not. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's not really easy 
to uh, run a um, uh, fashion business in Seattle. You know, when I, I moved to uh, America, people were telling me, why don't you go to New York? Why don't you go to LA? Mm -hmm. Because those are, you know, the fashion, you know, cities. Yeah. But I was like, why should I go there? Because I didn't feel it. I tried mm -hmm. to go to uh, California, I tried to yeah. go to New York, but, you know, I didn't really like feel it in my heart, like I should, yeah. you know, you know, stay to those places. I was like, I can make it to Seattle. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, as I said, it's really hard because people are really, I mean, Seattle, as you, we all know, it's more like a casual city. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really such oh, a yeah. yeah, it's such <laughs> a big challenge that I personally have, or all the designers have, you know, to educate people, yeah. to make uh, people understand like, okay, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. As you know, if you go to Paris, you can see when someone is going out for a date, you know how they dress up, like shit nice. Uh -huh. But here you can see people when they go for a date, they are so casual. They don't care, yeah. you know, but... Part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's happened, but you know what we're trying to do, I personally, yeah. you know, this is me, what I'm trying yeah. to do is to tell people, like, you know, you can look chic or yeah. good, like, every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you can go to some other places, you can just sit there without opening your mouth. Mm. Your dress code or your look can speak for you, you can speak on your behalf. Mm. You can go for like a job interview. Already, the way you look so present, uh, presentable, they can easily give you the job without even like, asking you so many questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something people are always You're really with. selling your stuff really well right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like personally, like every day when I, 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 I go out, I make sure I look good every time. Okay. So this is why, you know, I have, I'm, I'm here to, you know, to educate people. For one, if I can say educate, it may be, it may sound hard, but you know, you know, just to help people to change their way of dressing here in Seattle. Yeah, the challenge in the future, it's, uh, I can say like, you know, like so far, I know that they are, there's like a lot of competition in the industry, mm -hmm. I know, and I'm not gonna say I'm the, the top one, or I'm the only one, you know, just, you know, just, you know, I'm, the, I'm not like the elite. I know there are like a lot of designers. I know there's a lot of challenge because I have to work hard, especially to make my name out. It's not easy. There are like some of the designers who started this business like a long time ago before me, and they already make their name out, you know, to uproot someone who did already like, you know, puts the roots, you know, under the, the, uh, the what do you call this, uh, the soil or, you know, the ground, to uproot it, it's not, it's not easy. You know, you know when the tree is really like, you know, uh, uh, mature, to cut it and to uproot that tree, it takes some time. So for you to do it, you have to make sure you have an appropriate, you know, machine that can cut off those roots and maybe, you know, try to destroy the, the tree. So what I'm trying to do for me, I'm trying to work hard. I know there's a lot of competition. I know like people, you know, people are, many people are going to study passion, many people are working on the passion. But my goal is to work hard, to work on my quality, mm -hmm. to work on my customer service. And you know, when I, I go to someone to talk about my product, you know, I'll, I will be sure that what I'm saying is what I'm doing. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about each of uh, these three pieces that you've done? Yeah, um, this is, as you can see, uh, this is uh, one of the pieces I showcased last time, you know, for my debut fashion show. It has, a, you know, this beautiful uh, lace. You know, this is such an expensive lace. And it has this uh, kind of ruffle here on the side. You know, it's, uh, the fabric I use, it's uh, uh, shamus. You know, the fabric, it's uh, so nice. And this one is more, as you can see, it's more like evening. You can use it for like wedding dress or, you know, uh, any events, you know, for evening events. And uh, yeah, and this one was handmade. You know, I didn't make it by myself from scratch, you know, to the final product. And one thing you can notice on my product, it's really, the finishing is so nice, it's so clean. And you know, when it comes to do the lining inside, I do really do it. You know, this is something I like doing it. And when you touch, you know, my stuff, you can see that finish the detail is so clean and nice 
and this one you can see like this piece it's linen fabric and uh, this is like 100% like linen and as you can see it has a beautiful details you know with this fancy uh, buttons and uh, the inspiration behind this idea was from you know the Asian like uh, Chinese uh, 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 style I don't know if you know you know the, the one that had like an uh, you know office uh, uh, Chinese uh, color mm. I got this inspiration from the you know Asian uh, uh, you know uh, outfit and I was like how can I make it like, look like, more fancy so uh, this one you can see this uh, snake fabric it's one of my favorite fabric it's uh, also like a dress I showcased like on my debut fashion show can touch it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. It feels so good. Oh, it does. It feel good. so nice, oh, yeah. I like it. It looks like a real steak. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a beautiful dress. It's very it's a, beautiful. Yeah, it's a flare dress, and as you can see, it's like op an opening here, you know, to, because as you can see, like most of the, you know, the ladies, they always want to go, like, to show, you know, like a little bit of the cleavage. So this is uh, why I designed this for, for the lady, and you can have, like, a beautiful necklace here. And, uh, as you can see this fabric it's so nice how much would you charge for a dress like this well I uh, actually to tell you the price like this I don't do it oh yeah, yeah I don't yeah. really do it yeah, yeah. because what I do is I say I do more couture yeah. you know first of all it depends on your budget yeah okay. like how much you have for so example like, yeah, yeah if I can see like I can say like, for, if I can give an example like this one is like two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars okay and maybe you come to me and you are not like able to afford it so it's, it's not worth it for me to tell you you know what i do when someone comes in it's as i say it depends on your budget how much money you want to spend